My name is Michael Burke. I originally hail from Liverpool, England. Came to the artist district in the summer of uh, 1996. It's the only place I've ever lived in Los Angeles and it felt like home even back in, in that day and it's very much my home now. I lived on the top floor of 810 East 3rd Street. I was a, a photographer, went to school up in uh, Santa Barbara and it felt like LA was a great place to come and gain more experience, work with other you know, well-established commercial photographers. It was a great place to come and take pictures, even on the street or in uh, an open concrete space as my space was at the time. And I have uh, pictures of people that are no longer here. I mean, people like Dr. John Jones and a lot of other characters of that time. You probably don't realize the value of those pictures until those times and those people have, have since gone. The mid 90s, the artist district was barren. You could park your car on either side of the street in the middle of the street. For a lot of people, where they invested their time was in their loft, in their living space. But I mean, to drive through here and to have friends here or to bring back a girl downtown, I mean, there was a lot of openness, parking lots, disused buildings. And the artist district was centered around Third Interaction, which was where the American Hotel was, where 810 East 3rd Street, where I lived. So I felt like I was really at the crossroads of what was the artist district. Heading south of 3rd Street, there was just nothing but hookers, pimps, homeless. I mean, even the LAPD wouldn't go near the 4th Street, 6th Street Bridge. They were wastelands. So it's changed a lot, uh, obviously, since then. But it also felt secure. Everybody knew the people that were walking in the streets. It wasn't like you felt afraid to go outside. There was never anything like that. That's where I get back to that sense of community and it feeling like home. Eat, drink, Americano, it's all about the best of American product, whether it be artisan cheeses, craft beers, wines, and we have a lot of specialty items, but Eat Drink Americano is really incorporating a lot of what's best about this area. We used uh, District Mill right across Vignus Alley here to do all the furniture. Peter Greco, who did all the typography around us, was somebody I met when I first came to this area, and little did I know, but 17 years later, he would be doing the script wall for a bar, restaurant that I would later be owner of. So it was, it was kind of exciting. And then we had Traction Press that did our business card. So we've really tried to incorporate a lot of the talent that's in this neighborhood to bring this together. I liked and patronized the previous Cafe Metropole and actually worked and helped out in the last three years of its operation. It was only at the end of 2011 that I decided that it would be good to continue to pursue and keep a restaurant bar, if you will, here at this location. I just felt like I had a connection and I had a sense of what really people wanted and the spirit that they wanted in a place and ultimately what they wanted to eat and drink and even listen to in terms of music, whatever it was. I just felt like I could at least give it a good shot. Sometimes I'd hear people coming home uh, after a good night at Al's Bar and I'd hear them outside my window. But I grew up in the 80s in the UK and uh, listening to the punk rock scene of England and so Al's Bar was a great place to go and you know you could smell the urine, you could listen to the grittiness that was smoking. So that realness, that rawness really was very much a part of Al's Bar. The American Hotel, I mean, I really didn't know what it was. Was it a hotel? Was it a hostel? When we'd look from across the street on the rooftop and, well, what's that? What's the American Hotel? I mean, is it a hotel? Do they have a reception desk? I mean, what's the nightly rate to stay there? And maybe it was just a hotel by name and not so much in practice. As you started to meet some of the cast of characters that lived in the American Hotel, it almost kind of reminded me of a boarding school dorm. People smoking out and 
doing whatever it was, people may stay years there. It could have been a, a brothel. I never really re knew exactly what took place in the American Hotel. If you didn't know him and you didn't know his character, you would walk in there and he would make you feel so unwelcomed and so uh, not wanted. The croaky voice that would come across from the counter. What do you want? I knew he loved baseball. I knew he loved the White Sox. And especially when the White Sox started winning, Joel's demeanor was very upbeat and it was almost like, hey, how you doing? It was a different different Joel Bloom, but once I got to know him, I, I just knew what a, a really great, warm person he was. I knew also when he wasn't well and I'd go and visit him in the veterans hospital. It was tough, but then at the same time, when he got out of hospital and then he, he'd come to Metropole then and I'd serve him his Caesar salad and he'd like wine, but he knew he wasn't allowed wine, so it was a, an iced tea. Whether it's a mile radius or whatever. I think there can be a thriving arts community here. One or two people have been known as the mother hen of downtown or the artist district, but Joel cared about this neighborhood. I remember going on marches against the unified school district and walking to City Hall from the artist district. When you talk about the progression of this neighborhood, to lose someone of his caliber, of his character, we really could use his leadership and his sensibility and drive and vision for the future. For many people that have even spent just a few years down here, the sense of community down here is fantastic. And it's always been an appeal for people coming to either visit or to ultimately live in the artist district. And I really hope that the influx of a lot of people in a short period of time won't upset that balance. The projection of the populace doubling in the next two to three years, we're gonna have a lot of change. It's a mixed bag for me because I wanna hold on to what I like and what I think was the heart of this neighborhood. And ultimately, a lot of the patrons that we have here, they support us because they feel like this is what they want to represent their neighborhood. They don't want to see the chains and the corporate restaurants come in and, and upset the artist history. I mean, there's only one eat, drink Americano, and I think for a lot of people, they're happy that that type of business is the makeup of the artist history. A lot of these buildings will probably get the dust taken off them and their true beauty will show through. I think that if we develop the artist district with a consciousness of both the arts and a green movement to try and bring in public transportation. I think it can be a fantastic place to live, have a business and, and ultimately call home. I keep my fingers crossed and I hope that we do right by the artist district and the heart and soul that was here long before my time and even going back to the 1890s when this used to be vineyards and the 1920s where there was a lot of industry and a lot of energy on the streets of this neighborhood. It deserves the best of what we develop ultimately Los Angeles into. Yeah. Cut.